We will have six oral communication, as I already mentioned in the, the beginning of this food section. So the first speaker will be Anton Soria Lopez from Spain. Uh, good afternoon, Anton. Uh, so uh, when, you, when you want, you can start your presentation. Remind just you have about eight, eight minutes for, um, for your uh, intervention, okay? Okay. We also remind everyone that the posters are online in our website. So you just go to the poster section and you can see them all. Good, at, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Anton Soria Lopez. I come from the University of Vigo. Uh, before uh, starting my presentation, uh, I would like uh, to say uh, that my English level, level is very uh, is low and uh, I have a small hearing uh, problem. Uh, I, therefore, I would like uh, to say uh, that uh, there are possible question, uh, questions uh, you uh, write, write uh, in the chat uh, so that I can uh, read and understand uh, without difficulties. Uh, thank you. Um, I am going to uh, I am going to uh, talk about a fit effect of personality liquid extraction on the lipid composition of focus vesiculosus. Uh, introduce, introduction. Um, algae are rich uh, compounds, uh, compounds uh, beneficial to health and uh, uh, have a great interest, uh, interest uh, because of the many applications for food industries. Uh, therefore, uh, the importance of uh, algae as a source of high value a fatty acids intended for nutrition is increasing rapidly. And methods uh, for the maximum uh, station and um, best determination of uh, insaturated uh, uh, fatties uh, in algae are needed. Uh, traditionally, uh, these lipids were extracted uh, using solid liquid extraction methods. However, uh, these methods uh, present the following uh, disadvantages. Uh, it is time consuming, uh, needs a lot of energy, and um, it uses solvents which not in accordance with the current regulation. Um, therefore, uh, it is necessary uh, to de develop a new extraction process uh, to exploit the bioactive present in the marine algae. Among others, uh, pressurely liquid extraction uh, is currently, uh, is currently uh, uh, an advanced environmental friendly technique since it offers the following benefits. Short extraction time, decreased solvent consumption, decreased sample handling and increased yield. Uh, in this study, uh, a species spef uh, a marine algae is imploded, specifically focus vesiculosus. Uh, it is a macroalga belonging to a brown species uh, and a cone uh, be found in the northwest coast of Spain. They, uh, they uh, are fre uh, very frequent in Galician coast. coast. And, and this study one 
e, análisis de composición o lipis in focus vesiculosus. Su visual liquid extraction optimization por e, de extracción e, de bioactivo e, in present in the animals. E, Concrete focus vesiculosus. From the nutritional point of view, insaturated fatty acids are relevant. E, Arachinodi acid, eicosapenta, enoki acid and oleic acid e, are some, e, some examples. E, section of results and discussion. E, this table e, shows e, the lipid content and fatty acids e, profiles of focus vesiculosus. E, the lipid content obtained e, was e, 6.6 percent and 10 e, fatty acids e, were detected. Oleic, palmitic, and miristic acids eh, were the most predominant. Eh, due to focus vesiculosus accumulate eh, high eh, fatty acids quantities, eh, the effect on the lipid composition of different pressual liquid station conditions was investigated using this angle. Eh, this table eh, shows eh, the yield pressual liquid station stretch in percentage using, using three station temperature, 18, 120, and 160 degrees Celsius, and five solvents which eh, different dielectric constants. As expected, expected eh, the yield eh, increase eh, with extraction temperature, reaching the maximum uh, at 160 degrees, which Et ethanol watcher 50 50. Eh, in the range of eh, temperature studied, eh, fatty acid profiles eh, were found eh, to be similar, showing eh, the lipid composition eh, is not eh, affected by temperature. And therefore, uh, the 120 degrees Celsius uh, was uh, the optimum temperature. Uh, this table, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, from the results uh, shows in the table, uh, at, uh, ethanol watcher. 50 50 solvent is, uh, is, not, uh, is not proper solvent uh, to extract uh, fatty acids from algae. Uh, fatty acids uh, profile uh, were different, uh, and fatty acids proportions uh, depending of uh, the solvent use. For example, Ethyl acetate improve oleic, ara, and epa eh, to eh, compare com, 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 to acetone and ethanol. The quantities almost the double. And the, the improved eh, compounds eh, correspond to a uh, long chain fatty acids. Uh, therefore, uh, the, therefore uh, the, the, they uh, are the most uh, solubles in 
a, a, non, a polar, o sea, non polar eh, solvents dan eh, de, de short chain fatiasis. Eh, conclusiones. Eh, focus vesiculosus is a good candidate eh, to exploit eh, fatty acids eh, for the novel food products. Presually, liquid extraction eh, technology is currently eh, an environmental friendly eh, technique eh, to exploit eh, high eh, quality lipids. In this case, eh, insaturated eh, fatty acids. Eh, using ethyl acetate and eh, 120 eh, degrees Celsius as temperature. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Anton, for your brilliant presentation. Uh, okay. I will just uh, ask you to stay in line because we will proceed for the other uh, communications. And at the end of all the communications, we will uh, see or gathering the questions for uh, each one of you, okay? So now we will proceed with the next oral communication. It will be performed by Filipa Fernandes from uh, CMYPB, Portugal. So Filipa, when you wish, you can start. Good afternoon. The work I have present today is tools to develop dairy ingredients, be active and preservative purpose. The cheese is a widely consumed, easily digestible and well-tolerated dairy product. It's a rich source of calcium and saturated fatty acids that co-contribute to high-low density lipoprotein cholesterol, a well-defined risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Zosterols, phytosterols, and mycosterols are sterols chemical homologous to cholesterol. These molecules interfere with the micellar solubilization of cholesterol in the intestine and reduce the efficiency of cholesterol absorption. In, in relation to mycosterols, the ergosterol is the most abundant uh, sterol in these organisms. The ergosterols were reports uh, different uh, uh, bioactivity. So the objective of this work is incorporation of agaricus pisporge extract, which contains mycosterols and poor ergosterol in cheap cottage cheese, in order to develop a functional food with hypocholesteremic effects. The mycosterol extract were obtained by ultrasound assisted extraction and the cheese extract for ergosterol and cholesterol quantification by succulent extraction. For incorporation, we incorporation 40 milligrams of agaricus bisporge extract per gram of cottage cheese and three milligram of poor ergosterol per gram of cottage cheese. So we get three different samples cottage cheese with agaricus bisporge extract, with poor ergosterol and without any of the select ingredients. For nutritional characterization, moisture, fat, proteins and hash were determine determined. For chemical composition, fatty acids, free sugars, organic acids and ergosterol and cholesterol were analyzed. And for physical parameters, uh, color and texture were determined. For bioactive properties, the cytotoxicity and hypocholesterolemic activity were performed, and it was also verified uh, the microbial load the cottage cheese. The results of nutritional uh, characterizations are very similar between samples. The, the moisture is 69 grams, the most abundant macronutrient is a crude fat, and this cheese uh, will have uh, 180 kilocalories. The major sugar 
is the lactose and uh, 12 uh, fatty acids were detected. Uh, the most abundant is palmitic acids. Six organic acids were detected. Uh, the major is lactic acids. In relation to color, there was not a very intense color shift between cheese. The darkest cheese, the unincorporated with the agaricus bisporus extract. Initial texture was the same in all cheese, but the adhesiveness decreased significantly over time and the cohesiveness increased over time. The cholesterol content present in cheap cottage cheese runs from 27 to 29 milligrams. Concerning the incorporation of agaric, agaricus bisporus extract and poor ergosterol, the incorporation was not a 100% efficient. According to the toxicity evaluation, a subtoxic, subtoxic concentration of 50 micrograms per milliliter of ergosterol was selected and applied in the cell transport assay. For the cells transport assay, different samples with ergosterol and cholesterol were prepared. Regarding of cholesterol absorption, the cheese with poor ergosterol reduced uh, reduce cholesterol absorption by around about 21%, while cheese with agaricus bisporus reduced absorption around about 13%. In relation to microbial load, for aerobic mesophilic, the microorganisms grow over time was constant in all cottage cheese. For enterobacteria and psychotrophic bacteria, the microorganism increase was verified in all the formulation, just like to yeast and moats. The Staphylococcus aureus grow in the old cottage cheese. In conclusions, the incorporation of two hypocholesterolemic agents did not cause significant change in the cottage cheese. Regarding the hypocholesterolemic activity, a strong capacity of the agaricus bisporus extract and poor ergosterol in reducing the cholesterol absorption by the CACU2 cells. So, development of a functional dairy product with hypocholesterolemic capacity in line with the consumer and the industry needs. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. So now I will introduce you the next speaker. It is uh, Philippa Mandin, also coming from Mountain Research Center IPV from Portugal. Filipe, when you want, you can start. Okay, uh, good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank the organization, the opportunity to present his work that is about the phenolic composition and the bioactive properties of carbon bracts, and how does the maturation stage influence those parameters. So the planet's resources are increasingly scarce, reason why their most efficient use is gaining attention. Several studies make reference to the parameters such as the genetic background, the environmental conditions, and also the plant tissues has on the phenolic composition and consequently on the bioactive potential of the plant species. Sanara cardunculus, commonly known as cardum, is a Mediterranean herbaceous plant with high important value as a result of its several industrial applications. It is used as um, in the production of paper pulp, bioenergy, and uh, in pharmaceutics and cosmetics. Cardon has also long tradition, tradition being used uh, as a result of these therapeutic properties. So uh, this work has the objective to characterize the phenolic composition and the bioactive properties of cardon bracts collected at several uh, maturation stages and at the same time valorize their, um, this part. 
So, uh, carbon bracts from the variable Altilis were collected in Greece at several maturation stages, and all the samples were extracted by a solid liquid extraction with a hydroethanolic mixture. Samples were collected during the growing period of 2017 and 2018. According to the BBCH scale, the principal growing growth stages of the samples were between five and eight, nine. Bragg samples were collected at eight harvest dates according to the scheme presented. Uh, for the phenolic composition, uh, were analyzed by high-performance liquid chromatography coupled to a mass spectrometry. For the evaluation of the antimicrobial activity, we used the microdilution method and several bacteria and fungi species. For the evaluation of antiproliferative activity, we, we, we used the sulforodamine B assay and several tumor cell lines and a non-tumor primary culture obtained from pig liver. For the evaluation of anti-inflammatory activity, was measured capacity of the extracts to inhibit the production of nitric oxide using a marine macrophage cell line. And finally, for the antioxidant activity, we use a two in vitro assays, the lipid peroxidation and oxidative hemolysis assays. Moving on to the obtained results, we tentatively identified 12 phenolic compounds, with a 3,5-O-decafeolicinic acid and a pigenin 7 o glucuronide, the ones in general, uh, the majority ones. Um, samples at early maturation stages revealed higher content of phenolic compounds when compared, compared with samples at late maturity. Uh, for the antioxidant activity, we verified that all the samples had capacity to inhibit the lipid peroxidation especially the samples at early maturation stages with the lowest IC50 values. For the Oxlea assay, also all the extracts reveal the ability to inhibit the oxidative hemolysis, uh, but in this uh, assay were the late maturity samples that revealed the highest activity. For the cytotoxic activity, also, the extracts with lowest stage of maturity presented the lowest G50 values and therefore higher uh, cytotoxic potential. Um, the lung carcinoma cells and the non-tumor culture were the ones that revealed the lower susceptibility for the Brax extracts. The anti-inflammatory potential was evaluated through the capacity of the extracts to inhibit the production of the pro-inflammatory mediator nitric oxide, and was verified that almost all presented capacity to inhibit the nitric oxide, except sample C2 and C3. The sample at earliest maturation stages was the one that revealed the highest anti-inflammatory activity. Finally, for the antimicrobial activity, we used six bacteria and six fungi strains. Extract C1 and C6 were the ones that revealed higher antibacterial potential with the lowest minimal inhibitory concentration values. And for the antifungal activity were the extracts C2 and C4 that revealed the highest potential. As a conclusion, cardum bracts were the parts of the cardum that are less used and normally are discarded as, as byproducts. Reason I is important to promote their valorization and proper use. Uh, according to the results, bracts collected at the earliest maturation stages revealed the highest content of polyphenols and also higher capacity to inhibit the lipid peroxidation, the tumor cells proliferation, the nitric oxide production. For other hand, uh, structs at late maturity revealed the highest uh, capacity to inhibit the uh, oxidative hemolysis. Uh, all the, uh, both of the extracts presented capacity to inhibit the bacteria and fungi growth. And finally, I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. So now we will move on. We will I will present you Ingrida uh, Krausutien. I think I, 
I don't know if I pronounced correctly your surname. Surname. She's uh, from uh, Lithuania. And finally, I want to thank you all for your attention. It's okay now. The, the, the problem is that you have. The meaning of the of extrude food is very popular in the world. On Wolete and others uh, claim that the extrusion process opens up unlimited possibilities for the creation uh, of new high fiber foods. According to uh, for Fuller and uh, Alice, uh, nutritional fibers can reduce the uh, blood glucose level uh, by slowing down digestion and absorption uh, of carbohydrates. The results uh, of a study conducted uh, by Fanindra show the uh, uh, reduction in blood glucose levels it has been observed with the uh, prolonged uh, use of extruded product. Uh, to promote the health, nutrition, and the education uh, society, Food Technology Department of the Faculty of Technologies uh, at Konas Collegia, University of Applied Sciences, is developing a safe, innovative, high-value functional for food production. Uh, the degrees uh, has been a um, recently developed product made from extruded corn. For the production uh, of um, chocolate uh, coated dragees, extruded corn uh, to flour dark chocolate containing 4 and 30% uh, of sugar made from a mixture um, of cocoa mass, cocoa butter, and sugar have been used. A uh, um, problem, a new um, product uh, was uh, um, produced by using the extruded grain. But the influence of this product on the level of glucose is in, in the capillary uh, blood is unknown. Um, the aim of the uh, research is uh, to determine um, the influence of the drugs emitted from extruded product on the level of glucose in the capillary blood. Uh, production, uh, the production of drugs uh, consistent of the following stages. Uh, first, uh, chocolate tempering, uh, pre coating gumming of the extruded corn, and uh, polishing. Uh, chocolate tempering uh, to temper dark chocolate um, a sharp uh, temperature uh, reduction from uh, 45 uh, to uh, 28 uh, degrees uh, of Celsius, and uh, increase of the operation uh, temperature up to uh, 31, 32. Um, degrees of Celsius been applied. A pre coating was the second stage of the delicious product. A chocolate was slowly uh, poured onto the extruded corn into the uh, coating machine, and the corn was uh, covered with uh, several layers of chocolate to make the uh, surface smooth and the core uh, to be completely uh, covered. A polishing is the third stage of the dredges production was uh, polishing. Polishing of dredges was uh, done twice to better gloss of the surface. A research methodology, a 57 uh, volunteers uh, were investigated, uh, 23 non-diabetic, 34 diabetic, type 1 uh, diabetes um, uh, Participants uh, five, uh, the second type uh, diabetes participants 29, age uh, 20, uh, 18, 18 to 84 uh, years. Uh, the volunteers uh, had to fill in uh, anonymous uh, questions on the lifestyle. Uh, the tests were performed in the mornings. Uh, the participants were asked not to have breakfast, not to drink water in the morning, abstain from alcohol and not to exercise intensely on the day before the test. If the subject uh, consumed uh, 40 grams dragees, the, uh, the glucose concentration in capillary blood uh, has been measured with contour plus system. Composite of dragee, uh, dragee uh, number one, extruded corn and bitter chocolate with uh, uh, 4% of sugar, Dragia uh, number two, um, extruded corn and dark chocolate with 30% uh, of sugar.
It has been observed that when the non-diabetic participants of the research were given to test dredges with bitter chocolate, after 15 minutes, the glucose level in capillary blood increased up to 0.76 millimoles per liter, followed by a gradual downward curve. After two hours of the conception of the product, the capillary blood glucose concentration uh, was the same as before eating. In participants with uh, first uh, type diabetes, uh, the maximum change in capillary blood glucose was uh, three millimoles per liter after uh, 30 minutes. After this peak of, uh, spike of uh, sugar level, uh, the capillary blood glucose level gradually decreased and uh, two hours after use of the dredges, non-change in glucose level uh, were observed. In patients with second type diabetes, um, the maximum change in capillary blood glucose uh, was 2.2 um, millimoles per liter after 15 minutes. And after uh, 30 minutes, um, the blood glucose level started to decrease. And after uh, two hours, uh, it was our 0.7 millimoles per liter lower than before use of products. When the non-diabetic participants of the research were given to taste the dredges with dark chocolate, the maximum change in capillary blood glucose was 1.3 millimoles per liter after 30 minutes and after two hours of the consumption of the product, the capillary blood glucose concentration was the same as before the product. In patients with first type, the maximum change in glucose concentration was 1.75 millimoles per liter after 15 minutes, after which the glucose change um, curve uh, gradually decreased. And after uh, two hours, uh, capillary blood glucose levels were the same as before consumption of the product. In patients uh, with second time uh, diabetes, uh, the maximum change in capillary blood glucose uh, is uh, 2.5 uh, uh, millimoles per liter. After 30 minutes uh, and after two hours, uh, capillary blood glucose levels were the same as before consumption of, of the dredges. Conclusions, uh, the composition of the dredges made from extruded corn and dark chocolates um, does not uh, cause spike. spikes in blood glucose levels in either healthy and diabetic people. Therefore, it can be said that this new product is suitable for people with high blood glucose level. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ingrida. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, now I will present you the next speaker. It will be Jonathan Masaueda that uh, will speak from uh, Brazil. Masao, Olá. Want you can start your presentation. Vídeo. Compartilhar a tela. Pronto. Okay. So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Masaueda. Thank you Sandrina for introduction and thank you for all the scientific commission for giving me the opportunity to present this work. So my present work is natural food preservatives, application of rosemary, basil, and sage in yogurts as a viable alternative to artificial ones using sustainable, low cost, and efficient processes. So foods are susceptible to a lot of, a lot of ways of degradation, uh, which can be by the oxygen present in the atmosphere or microbiological factors, physical and others. And one alternative, to preserve food is the use of antioxidants or antimicrobials. In the natural preservatives, uh, for example, compounds produced by plants by the secondary metabolism uh, is considered uh, compounds to, to defense against microorganisms, oxidizing agents, and helping the pollination process. So in this work, we use the three, three plants, rosemary, basil, and sage, and 
uh, in order to evaluate the preservative capacity of each one. In the first step, we use it, we use it, uh, a fractional factorial design to the structure of optimization. And the factors that were tested were time, solvent, and ultrasonic power. And then after the optimization, we made the analytic profile and the quantification. So for the bioactive properties, we made the anti antioxidant activity using the oxygen method. And then for, for the antibacterial and fungal activity, we use the microdilution method. For the cytotoxicity, we use the sulforodamine B method. And for the incorporation process, first we made the yogurt and added the extracts into the yogurt maker for about eight hours. And then we, when the yogurts were made, we, we added the fruit pulp and then we made the following analysis. So first of all, the physical chemical analysis, we evaluated three parameters, color, pH, and water activity. For our nutritional profile, we made the approximate composition and the energetic value according to the AOAC, and then the organic acids and the soluble sugars too. And lastly, we made the microbial load uh, taking account into microorganisms that are common in yogurt. So for the results uh, on the structure optimization, uh, in the chart you can see that the solvent was the factor that has greater influence in the extraction of uh, rosmarinic acid, followed by time and ultrasonic power. And then uh, we tested uh, some ranges of time of extraction and temperature and after the, the optimization, we got the time of one minute, the temperature of 75 degrees Celsius and the ultrasonic power of 375 Watts. After that conditions were established, we made the, the instructions for the incorporation. So for the bioactive properties, uh, for the antioxidant activity, the rosemary presented the best results followed by sage and finally basil. For antimicrobial activity, uh, rosemary and sage showed the best results, followed, followed by basil. And antifungal activity, rosemary showed be the best results, followed by sage and then basil. For cytotoxicity, none of the three strikes tested uh, uh, presented uh, toxicity uh, over the, the limit of concentration tested. So for the physical chemical analysis, uh, overall, in general, the storage time had much more great, much more influence than the preservative, preservative types. And for nutritional profile, the same thing occurred, that the storage time had much more influence. So for the organic acids, we saw, uh, we see uh, increasing the lactic acid over the storage time. And that's it, that is justified by the presence of lactic bacteria over the time in the yogurts. And for the soluble sugars, we can see uh, justify for the lactic bacteria too, the decrease of the lactose being consumed over the time. And lastly, for the microbial load, for aerobic, aerobic mesophilic, there was a slightly decrease over the time, but not significant, uh, uh, but not statistically significant. And for lactic bacteria, we saw a slight increase over the time. For polyforms and molds and yeast, there was no growth over the 14 days. So in conclusion, for the structure optimization, the most influent parameter was the solvent and the time after the, the ultrasonic power. For the bioactive properties, uh, rosemary in general presented the best results, followed by sage and then basil. And none of the three, the three extracts showed the uh, pathotoxicity. For the physical chemical analysis and nutritional profile, we saw that the storage time had much more influence than the preservative type. And a good uh, positive point on, in this work is that the three extracts, three plant extracts, uh, show its similar behavior to potassium sorbate, that, that is a, a synthetic additive used in yogurts. And finally, for the for the yogurts, a study fundamental about this food matrix 
is the presence of the lactic bacteria in the yogurts. And two things that must be considered when you search for a new preservative in yogurts, that that is uh, the preservative must preserve the food. And then he must ensure that they will have lactic bacteria over the time. And those two things were confirmed on this work, uh, uh, seeing the lactic acid on the organic acids, the lactose on the soluble, soluble sugars profile, and the microbial load psychotrophic lactic acid bacteria. So thank you for all the members that helped on this work and all the organ organizations that helped with the financial support. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for your excellent presentation. So let's move for our last oral communication that it will be performed by Ricardo Ferreira from Portugal also. So Ricardo, when you want, you can start your presentation. Uh, hello, can, any, can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, hello, good afternoon. My name is Ricardo, and I'm going to be presenting to you the work that I've been developing during the first part of my PhD that is, the, that is entitled The Effect of High Pressure Processing and Thermal Pasteurization on the Microbial and Physical Chemical Properties of Three Varieties of Opuntia Ficus Indica. Uh, Opuntia Ficus Indica, or prickly pear in English, is considered an important food resource resource through the Mediterranean basin, mainly in Italy and North Africa, and the fruit itself is considered to be rich in nutrients and bioactive compounds, as you can see from the table on the left, it, that if, for example, it possesses 3.6% of total dietary fiber, as well as some, uh, some minerals, for example, like magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Prickly pear is, as, is uh, as well known for its health benefits that include, for example, its antioxidant capacity. Uh, however, despite this richness in nutrients and wealth and um, health benefits, almost no commercial available product, products of prickly pear are available in most of Europe. So the idea behind this project was trying to integrate Opuntia ficus indica in the European daily life through the production of high valued products from prickly pear. And we thought that, for example, prickly pear beverages that, that are perceived as healthy, tasty, and refreshing could be an opportunity, an att att attractive opportunity among the fruit manufactured products. And that's why in, in this part of, the, of my PhD, I was developing prickly pear beverage that I will be showing to you the results a few minutes later. The, the fruit itself, prickly pear, possesses a pH superior to 4.5, so the, the nectar produced from prickly pear is considerable, considerable a perish, perishable drink, and because of that, it needs further processing. And the idea behind this project was trying to compare two different types of, of pasteurization, the thermal pasteurization and the high pressure pasteurization, in order to evaluate its effect on the shelf life, the value of the product, and the organolactic effect. So we use for thermal pasteurization 71 degrees and 30 seconds, that is the time and temperature used in, uh, for industrial purposes for, for the production of um, high quality uh, premium juices. And we use for high pressure pasteurization 500 megapascal for 10 minutes. Uh, in order to evaluate the impact of the pasteurization methods, the two, the two that, we, that I just told you about, we mm, some, some physical chemical analysis were, were, were made. We analyzed the pH, the treatable acidity, cloudiness, browning, total solid, solids, and the redu reducing sugar content. As I told you in the beginning of my presentation, I, I analyzed and I studied three, three varieties of Opuntia ficus indica or prickly pear, and I'm going to be presenting to you the results of the three of them. But in order to, to make it easier, the discussion and easy to understand, I will be focusing only on the orange nectar because the results are very, are very similar for the three varieties that I studied. Regarding then the microbial load, as you can see from the graphic in the middle, when, when, when high pressure processing and thermal pasteurization are applied to enterobacteriaceae represented in red and eastern mold represented in green, and you cannot see the, some of the green lines because they are behind the enterobacteriaceae line on, on the bottom, you can see that, that when applied high, high pressure processing and thermal pasteurization to those microorganisms, the, 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 their, their microbial load goes below the detection limit line. And so that, that's why they are represented in zero. 
so regarding the microbial load and the increasing shelf life for, for the products, we'll, we'll only need to, to use the tap microorganisms to discuss it. So you can see here for the raw the nectar without pasteurization that the, the shelf life is around eight days because in this dotted line is the threshold of for uh, 6.48 where the food is considered uh, spoiled. And for the thermal pasteurization, you can see that is around 30 days. And for high pressure processing is about 60 days. Uh, regarding the physical chemical properties, you can see that for, for, for the orange nectar, there is a small decrease in pH during the duration of experience. And regarding the treatable acidity, you can see that for the orange nectar, there's, there is a, uh, an increase in the treatable acidity due, for example, to the fermentation process that, that is occurring. And you can say that the fermentation is occurring because you, you can see that the microbial, the microbial load is increasing. So the microorganisms are producing some organic um, acids that are being, that can influence the treatable acidity of my nectars. Regarding the bricks, cloudiness and browning, you can see that through the duration of the experience, the cloudiness maintains more and less similar dur during the 45 days. Um, for the bricks degree, you can see that you, there that are a slight decrease in the, the increase in the bricks or, or to, total solid solids during the duration of experience. And you can see a slight increase in browning dur during the 40 days, 45 days of the experience. You can say that through the analysis of, of to, those two methods that the, the sugar available is decreasing, for example, mainly to the, the Maillard reaction that are occurring between the proteins and the um, amino acids and sugars of the, of the of my samples. Regarding the reducing sugar content analyzed by DNS method, you can see that the variation of the concentration of reducing sugar is, is varies only slightly. And when you can see a slight increase in sugar contents, maybe due to the liberation of sugar from degrading cells provoked, for example, from some of the acid, organic acids resulting from the microbial organisms action. Regarding the conclusions, you can see and you can say that the, the treatments of thermal pasteurization and high pressure processing allow the Opuntia nectars to increase their shelf life in approximately 25 days for thermal pasteurization and 40 days for high pressure processing. Regarding the, the physical chemical properties, you can say that they were maintained within acceptable ranges between five and eight days for the non-pasteurized samples, up to 30 to 45 days for the thermal pasteurization samples, and up to 45 to 60 days for the ones treated using high pressure processing. So in conclusion, you can say that both, both the, thermal, the thermal pasteurization and high pressure processing allowed to, to maintain the microbial and physical chemical properties in a, within acceptable regions to the duration of the experience. However, high pressure processing samples had a higher increase in shelf life when maintaining the similar organolytic effects as thermal, thermal pasteurization. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo, for your so elucidative and uh, clarifying presentation. So now we will have time, just a few minutes for uh, some questions. We have here already some questions for uh, Philippa, for Philippa Mandin. Teresa Brash is asking if you correlate the biological activities that you obtain it with the phenolic compounds you identify in the, the extract? Uh, so the correlation is being made. Um, we have primary, primary results that is in, indicate a, best, a better correlation, especially uh, with flavonoids, but uh, at the moment we don't have the final results. Okay, we have another question for you that is from uh, Fatima Duarte. Fatima Duarte is asking, uh, what was the flowering stage of the beginning of the collection time, with or without flowers? Um, that part of the cultivation and harvest of the, of the sample is, the, um, is made by one of our partners, uh, Professor um, Spiridon uh, Petropoulos in Greece. And uh, um, I know that in the beginning of the um, samples collection, no flowers is in the, the sample. But th that kind of um, information is better to uh, obtain it from Professor Spiridon, and uh, then I can uh, uh, send an email with the, the, 
the final uh, information. Okay, so Teresa Braz, if you have any doubts about this issue, you can send an email and we will address it to Filipa so she can answer if you have any more doubts about this, this subject. So thank you, Filipa. We have now a, a questions for um, Filipa Fernandes that is made by Joana Rolo. And Joana Rolo says, can you elaborate on the safety of using these ingredients in food products? Thank you and keep, keep up with the good work. Well, you analyzed the toxicity of the extract and they presented no toxicity for normal cells, but more assays are need to be sure about that. Okay. Okay, so more in conclusion, more you need to perform more assays to be sure about this application has food ingredients. Yes. Okay, so I think we have no more, no more questions. I thank you all the participants and all the, the speakers of these uh, oral communications for the food section. Now we will have um, a mini break and then we'll, we, we will start with a pitch section that will be moderated by my colleague, Dr. Marcio Carocho.